So got it. I'm the guy to ask the questions too, if you have any. So um, do you want me to give them a little background about online closings real quick? Yeah, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, yeah. So we can hear. Oh, I'm asking you to unmute. Here we go. Oh, that's going to hear. I got to mute me now. I, they can hear me through your mic. All right. All okay. right, guys. So hello. Hi. <laughs> I feel like I've met you before. Hey, I'm Chad. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, remote online closings got legalized in Minnesota in 2019 or remote online notarization. It's taking a little time for uh, the legalities of like a mortgage and note and everything to catch up. Um, we do have a rep from Guaranteed Rate today here, Brian. Guaranteed Rate was the first lender that I ever heard of doing remote online closings for the buyer. For the seller, it's typically fine for them to do it. Any seller can do a remote online closing. Um, but it's the note in the mortgage is where we were getting held up before. So uh, Guaranteed Rate uh, was the first one that I worked with doing that. Um, let's see, last year, the, obviously, the numbers for remote online closings like skyrocketed, went up 560%. And this year, we're not seeing a slowdown of it. So it's become kind of a new norm. Uh, it's been exponential growth on that side, too. So this is going to be the future of closing uh, one day. So, Melanie, what do you want to do? Should we do this thing? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're going to show you guys what your clients would see in an online closing, what the environment looks like. Um, and what their experience will kind of be during the closing process. So Melanie, you're sharing your screen right now? Yes. Okay, open up your email for me. And then go to the tippy top. Oh, which one is it? Uh, click that. Yep, the okay. Minnesota title Fairfax. Go to other. There you go. Sign documents now. Yep. All right. So when your clients, when we set up an online closing, your clients get emailed a link and it says sign documents now. They click the link. So next, Melanie is going to click the sign now button. It's all pretty. Oh, go back. I have to make sure and screen share. Hold on. Your screen. But I'm in the Zoom. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, so. so just screen share. Um, sorry. Just screen share. Is it right there? This one. Because yep. that's what I'm in. Yep. Okay, so good. this is what Chad has been talking about for the online people. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So you can see in front of you, this is what the home page looks like. Melanie, go ahead and click sign now. It's all pretty self-explanatory for the clients. Prior to them getting the email, I do send out a prep email. Uh, it goes step by step in detail. It's very long um, about what they're gonna have to do. So if they needed help, I had a uh, recent client that was 90 years old do this and she did a great job and she just read the email and followed the instructions and she did well so if you're tech savvy you don't really need the instructions if not so much it's something that can be really utilized um so every single document if you want to scroll through it real quick yes so she was a seller yes yep and so you had sent her the yep so she had already seen the numbers she'd seen everything yep by that point yep had you gone over the numbers with her Phone. Yep. So there's two ways that we can do it. We can go over the numbers on the phone with her. I can go line by line um, or else we can uh, include the Alta in this. So they get it prior to meeting with me. And then because uh, during this process, you'll see that Melanie will have to meet with me, the notary to notarize documents. Um, and then when she meets with me, she can ask me questions she has. We can go over the numbers together at that point or I can call her prior. Um, when we use this method, I do like to email the documents out to the clients as soon as we get them. So they have the opportunity to look at them. Um, that's something you miss, I believe, at the closing tables, the opportunity to read the documents and see what each of them says. Um, everyone wants to get into their new house. Everyone wants to sell the house. It takes 20 minutes. Uh, this gives the client opportunity a few days to casually read the documents. If they have any questions, they can call. It's a really, really uh, convenient way to do it. Um, yeah. So you can see that Melanie can look through all the documents. If you scroll down to the bottom, Melanie, you see where obviously she has to sign. It's pretty clear. Uh, two ways client can sign. You can either click the box. Sign now. Uh, click the your name box down there. Yes. And when you do that, it automatically creates a signature. Um, so this first document is what notarize.com uses. It says that this exact signature is going to represent you during the transaction because it's not your real signature. Um, so that's why they have that. Also, if you click sign now in the top right-hand corner, they can do that and accept and sign. 
and it will just automatically fill everything in as well. Hello. Hi. Um, and we're just going through what your client will see during the process right now. You can click next document. Okay. Uh, so this would like this would be our privacy policy. They have the option, of course, to scroll through. If they don't care what it says, they can just click sign now at the top right hand corner. Um, and it would automatically sign it and they can click next document. So you're going to have those clients that really want to read and you have those clients that don't care. They just want the house or they just want <laughs> to get rid of the house. So um, and then an example like this, if you scroll through this real quick, Melanie, mm -hmm. you'll see there's a lot of signing spots, um, a lot of places where they are going to have to sign. Um, if you click sign now in the top right hand corner there, Melanie, it'll fill everything in for them. So that's something I like to explain to them is if you want to read through and you want to initial one at a time as you go, I would suggest they go through and click the box the, uh, that says initial or today's date. If they are don't care again, sign now is the express way. So this is all stuff we go through, but it's just kind of what you'll be able to see the experience here. Go to the next document. And then anytime they get to a document that needs a notary, uh, it's not gonna let them sign it. If you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see that there's a proceeds authorization form. Obviously you need a notary to do this. Um, you can see their names grayed out. And at the top, it says that uh, the requirements are fulfilled. So there's nothing they have to do right now. So if you click join meeting, continue, they're gonna have to make sure they have okay internet connection. I've had people in pretty remote spots like Northern Minnesota do this as long as you have um, about 15 megabits a second or megabytes a second, you should be fine. Um, but you can see Melanie can preview her camera. You can see when I'm talking, the sound bars go up and down. They know they have good sound. Play the test sound. Notarize. So oh, it's not going up on there, but it's fun little test sound says notarize. And um, yeah, so they can see all that. Scroll down a little bit more. You can They can see their connection. Uh, if they have a weak connection, it'll let them know and they have the option to go forward with it. I tell people, if you can stream Netflix, you can do this. So if you're streaming anything, that it's going to be fast enough to do this as well. Yes. How do you know this? Known? This? Yeah, we'll get to that part. Yep. yep, we'll get to that part. Well, you can see me for one. No, I'm kidding. No, I know. I... Yep, right. could be the other way. Yes. So yes. we'll get to that part. So go ahead and scroll down. Continue. Which is something we unfortunately sometimes run into. People try to get <laughs> through with that. Um, so they do have to put in their personal information. Uh, Melanie, you want to put the last four? Just do one, two, three, four, or whatever. So is the title person in that little window, are they there the entire time that they're clicking those buttons? Nope, right at the beginning uh, is anything that they can sign on their own. Um, so I like to also advise with people and see if they want me to read everything to them or if they want me to go through everything. If they do, I can, there's a setting where they have to meet with me for every single document and that's fine. Um, if they want me to talk to them on the phone, I do that with a lot of people is I'll sit on the phone and they'll be like, a closing acknowledgement. What does this mean? I'm like, well, let me take it through it for you. Right. I've gotten over these docs thousands of times. So I know what they mean. Um, and I can just go through each one with them. So there's a few different options. And especially with a newer experience like this, it's important. I think that I one ask people how they expect it to go and how they want it to go. And two, it's important that we get feedback on the process from the clients too to figure out, which is really cool. At the end, you're going to see that she has the opportunity to write a review and it gets saved to the website. So every time someone closes, uh, you, the notary is notified of how they, the person thought they did. So mm -hmm. that's really cool too. Um, that instant feedback is awesome. So they put in their personal information here. You can go ahead and click continue. Typically, if it's a new client, they would have to put all of it in. Uh, get started. So what this system is, I like to say online notarization is more secure than in person because First off, this is pulled from their social security number. It's five questions, multiple choice, that ask them questions that's pulled off their social. social. So you can see this one, which one of the following zip cord codes is associated with you. It'll ask you, what color GMC did you own in 2015? It's, it's actually pretty hard. I've had one person, I've done about 200 of these transactions now. I've had one person fail two times in a row and that locks you off for 24 hours. <laughs> So people can generally get it right. They have to do a little thinking. Uh, if you want to go ahead and just click the correct answers, since this is a test environment, but it I'm obviously glad they just told me says correct. correct. Answers. So you can just get through it. <laughs> um, you have to get four out of five right. There are some questions that are hard, um, but this is just one of the security measures that's taken. Yeah, and yeah, they can be 
Okay. Which of the following counties yeah. submit. The next part of the security process is gonna be here. It says you passed your questions. Okay. Now do take uh, the second one, take photos with the web browser, just cause we're trying to get it all right. in one. Continue. So now they take a photo of their driver's license, passport, whatever with the webcam, just do a driver's license. Okay. That'll be fine. It's pretty simple. They hold up their photo to the we'll camera. This is my driver's license. Okay. And they just, <laughs> they can literally just like click any, any button they want. Okay. Then they have to take a photo of the back. So confirm and continue. And then take, take a photo. photo. Yep. Perfect, right? <laughs> it looks great. But that uh, would fail it, right? In real life. <laughs> in real life, that'll fail it. So once you do this, um, the next thing you have to do is enter your information that's on your driver's license. Okay. So just pretend. Since Melanie has done this practice with me before, the information's in there that she put in there before because she would have set up her profile. Um, <clears throat> continue. And then. Okay, now we start the video call with the notary. Yep, go ahead. And so I get rang in. Um, the system actually texts me when she's logging in too, so you never miss an appointment. Click your little thing right there. Yep, we're just gonna mute ourselves. Okay, so it's no, not, no. <laughs> so it's not annoying. Otherwise, it'll echo. Okay. So now Melanie is meeting with me, the notary, right? The first thing that I do is I also have to check her ID. The system automatically reads it. If the information doesn't match, it'll alert you and you'll have to double check if it's blurry or something. It's something you can override as a notary, but you just have to double check. Um, then you, I also view the front and back side of the ID to make sure it's the same person doing. So there's a three step uh, process here. You have to upload your ID. The system has to validate you. The notary has to validate you. And you have to answer the four out of five questions correct about your identity as well. Um, and furthermore, after the uh, documents are signed, they're stamped with a non tampered with PDF uh, stamp. So when the county opens it, they can see this document hasn't been tampered with. If someone were to go in and like edit a PDF or like pull it into Word and bring it back, um, it loses that validity and is no longer a valid document anymore. So uh, that's just another measure they're taking with this. So I'll complete her ID validation. Um, so as a notary, there's a lot of power you have in the process itself. I can point to places on the page for her if I want to direct her somewhere and she can't see exactly where I'm talking about. Um, I can, Melanie, if you click where it says bank name, mm -hmm. just click. Oops, your little box is actually in the way. That's fine. Oh. Um, on the right-hand side, she has options to put in uh, text, anything like that. Let's say she wants to wire funds, sure. I'm allowed to do that. Um, <clears throat> I can just do like whatever, blah bank, account number. So as I'm typing, I can get that information in there. One thing that is required for this uh, system is it's recorded. So a notary is required to keep three years of recordings on, uh, in their database and then notarize.com, the format we use keeps it forever. So if the client is asking me to type in the information for their account information, right? They uh, would say it to me verbally. I would type it in for them and then I would read it back and they would confirm with a yes or no um, if the information is correct or they can read it themselves. Um, and then there's the recording of it as well. So it takes a lot of liability away, not only from the title company, also from the agent or anyone else uh, in the transaction as well. Cause there's no, he said, she said in a court battle, there's just strictly the recording and you have all the information you need there. Mm -hmm. um, so, Melanie, you have something to sign down on the bottom here. Would you please sign that for me? Oh, so then I just click here. Yep, and you just have to reaffirm okay. that that's the signature you want to use. Reuse it. Perfect. And you can see, like, as I go through on the bottom, it's all being populated. Mm -hmm. um, the notary spot looks a little different for notaries. I know that doesn't really matter for you guys, but we are required to say where they're located. So, Melanie, where are you signing today? What county? Uh, Hennepin. In, is that in Minnesota? Yes. Perfect. So it's required that the notary put in Hennepin County, Minnesota. 
signature. And then I will have a seal pop in here. One thing that's cool about these electronic seals is these also can't just be copy and pasted. In the PDF itself it is an encrypted seal. So the county is allowed to look at the signature spots and the seal stamp and make sure that it's valid and it wasn't just a copy pasted seal. Like if someone took the PDF, took a snapshot of your little signature and put it on something else, it's not allowed. So it, they have to uh, validate all this at the county level. And so that's just another way that they are um, keeping things legit as well. And then one more thing, it has to be this little thing on the bottom, oh, you, yeah, that little thing on the bottom that I put underneath my signature, that is a requirement of the state as well. It has to say that it was recorded via audio, video communication. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so at this point, if we were done, let's say the client had a question on a document previously, <clears throat> I can flip through the documents. I can, uh, like, let's say this document here, if it's, uh, if they're already done, I'm allowed to move their signature around a little bit, whatever I want to do. So we can edit stuff. I can delete their signature. We can put in a new signing field, anything. So it's just like sitting at a table. Um, other than if someone puts ink to paper, then it's kind of hard to, <laughs> to Wait, delete to that. Out. <laughs> yeah. So at this point you would be able to make any corrections. We go through the documents one more time. I have a question. Yes. Sorry, and I was late. That's okay. Um, That's okay. Is this simultaneous? Are you sitting with someone at a computer while you're yep yep so the clients actually right in front of you well just over a webcam oh, yes okay. we would not be side by side no no no, no. yes no, I, no. Right, yeah but right. definitely at the same time mm -hmm. we would be doing this okay. yeah so and can this be a sell as well as a buy so if you are for cash yes anytime for uh if there's a lender involved we do have a representative from guaranteed rate here um they allow run purchases now or online purchases. Um, there's only a few lenders that are allowing it right now for the mortgage and note. A lot of lenders are allowing hybrid. Um, for sale, 99% of the time, a sell side is gonna be able to do a remote online closing. Um, but more lenders are in talks with getting it going. It's just uh, getting their note and mortgage approved to be signed online. So that is to come more and more coming. Um, that's why we brought a lender and they get a, he gets talking a little bit here about the lender side of things too. Okay. <clears throat> so at the end here, if I click complete, I can say, hey, Melanie, great to meet you. Mm -hmm. Bye. I hope you have a great day. Complete meeting. This is where she gets to rate me. So she gets to rate the notary immediately. She can put in any comments, anything she has to say. Um, from a title perspective, I just have to mark that it's a title package and I'm done. <laughs> so much fun. You're so right. much fun. It's true. I am. Uh, <laughs> and then right away, it's going to pull up, since this is a test, obviously, put all that stamping on there. It'll pull up her documents. She has the option to download at the top right hand corner and it'll download to her computer. Or nice. else I can, I've had clients that said, oh, I don't know how to download. Right. That's fine. You don't have to. I'll send them to you or I'll print them and mail them. That's fine too. Um, but they have the option to get them right away as well. So yeah, that's kind of what the closing looks like for your clients. Now we're going to answer questions, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, here, <laughs> we'll go you first. Okay. So it's difficult sometimes for many people that are selling mm -hmm. or buying, even if they've done it before, it's a long time, typically. Yep. Um, to understand what's going on with practice, I've got a closer sitting right in front of them explaining this document that they signed. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question would be, why wouldn't the closer be virtually sitting there looking at the participant, explaining every document at all times, just like the closer? Yeah, yeah, and that's something that again, I just like to ask people for their preference on that because a lot of clients are just want to sign. Um, and it's an option because we can mark any document to have to meet with a notary. We can mark any document that they can fill a prior ahead of time, but they still have to meet with a notary before they sign. Um, but yeah, that does depend on the client as well. Plus they're getting the extra time to read them. So some clients uh, that are on a time crunch for their signing, say they want to sell, they have 10 minutes. 
totally fine. We'll send you the docs a week ahead of time. You can read them, examine them. If you have any questions, give me a call. And then when we get to your signing, it'll just be click, click, click. And the follow-up question would be, is the person on the other side an actual closer? Yes. Or they are an actual closer? Yep. So it's different for each company you go to. For Minnesota Title, we pay for the subscription to this site where our closers are sitting on the other side. And that's really important to us. Yes. Um, Minnesota Title closers are sitting on the other side. Yep. Yes. They will be sitting on the camera. Yes. Um, so it's, not just it's not just a right. notary. Yeah. There are some title companies um that are trying to implement this and right now they're using the like notarize.com notaries that just pop in and notarize documents don't explain anything and that's kind of what in my opinion separates this process that we're doing different is that you have an actual closer that knows the documents explain the documents to your clients um and it should be your closer so they can bump jump into the file if they have any questions on the numbers if they have any questions on well certs or anything we can jump into the file and take a peek at it too so yeah. So yeah. You guys can have a question. I don't want to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Just to push back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, even today, when there's high-end clients, big clients, you know, professional athletes, coaches, I've had that mm -hmm. once. Um, they still, I mean, there was no choice. I mean, they had to come to the office and sign the papers. Mm -hmm. And if they told the closer, "Just give me, give me, give me, give me, sign, 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 sign," and walked out, that's what. That's my opinion. Experience is pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you wanted to have your closer there, just like a traditional closer, mm -hmm. but have it virtual, as I have a client right now who's paying for a ticket that is fine. He comes once a call and we're going to have to put all this policy away. Um, can, it, can it be set up that way? Yes. Yep. Yep. It can be set up where the the closer, like me or whoever's your typical closer, is sitting on camera with them the entire time. So there are multiple options and it depends. I know for, it kind of depends on demographic, but for uh, like really young clients that are like buying their first house, I know that it's very important that they know what everything says, right? Because right. their first house, it's scary. So I like to sit with them the whole time. Um, and the people that are more click, click, click are typically like investors or someone who's done it a thousand times. and. They just want to looked over everything. Yeah, they, they just want to fly through on. it. So yeah, yeah, we can do it that way too. Yep. Right. Does this, you know, in olden days, mm -hmm. pre-COVID, buyers and sellers would sit down in the same room. Now it sounds like they will, with this process, they'll be forever separated. Mm -hmm. and, and it also means that you may have to do twice as much. Does it mean you'll have to do everything twice, like you're doing now, I guess? Uh, or could a could somebody be live? Could a seller be live and or say a buyer be live and a seller remote at the same time? This will keep them separated. Um, in my closing experience, I've been a closer for five years. Um, in the last three, I haven't had buyers and sellers sit down with each other prior to that. Uh, one thing that it, it's actually easier for the closers to do pre-signs and purchases separate because when the pre-signs happen, sellers come to the table there are things that occasionally pop up at the table, like, hey, we're getting divorced, or, you know, hey, we actually had repair work done. The pre-sign allows for us to get the right documentation to allow the purchasers to buy on time, whereas before closings would fall apart at table. Um, so I don't see, I mean, there will be buyers and sellers sitting down together. That's fun. I think I, I am that kind of person that I want to sit down with people, um, but, I do see that buyers and sellers will be pre-signing and pur purchaser will be signing afterwards forever now, or just for the near future and the next few years. They'll grow like that. This is a question for you. Do you have any sort of time frame for how long it will take the lenders to get on the with this? So guaranteed rate is in. Yeah. Um, you were probably gonna answer this too. Go ahead. Right now, as I know of uh, three lenders, so guaranteed rate united wholesale is the other one mm -hmm. it's a small one we were talking about business yeah morning. we couldn't think of their name <laughs> um i don't know actually yeah one thing i know just from talking around is wells fargo and bell bank are both on the verge of going uh, mm -hmm. pretty virtual as well 
Um, and then that's just going to push things going faster too. One thing. Not yet. You know, I had a Keller mortgage person ask me if they could do it. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. And <laughs> Are it, it you? Really, the, but the no, change. I don't know. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that I'm sure that there's somebody probably looking into it or figuring it out. They've mm -hmm. got to be. Yeah. And I'm not a lender, so I don't know. Like, there's a lot. I know there's a lot more complications with the signature portion. Like, wedding is very important yeah. in, to lenders. And I know that. Um, so I know there's a lot of complications and it's been slow getting them in. Um, but I know since you guys started doing it, it's been off the walls. Yeah, so kind of giving an actually for a lender side of it. Um, so not every borrower actually is eligible for it. So, uh, so our system actually, because we're nationwide, our system will actually take all the algorithms of that person, where they're at, where they're buying it, and it will actually give them a green light as they're available for it. So some counties, even though the states, it's written by states that are eligible for this, mm -hmm. uh, not every county can do for it. Not every county will actually accept so, mm -hmm. we, so our system automatically meets that. So, and that's a conversation you have to have right up front, right away. As far as once the person is in, we go up through the system. It'll tell us if they're eligible or not eligible, and then we'll say, "Here's all your three options for your closing." So, though these these people that are in the business of closing, they'll know which one they're going to pick, and, and we'll take care of that online. Mm-hmm. And does uh, such people ask them? Mm -hmm. Does Minnesota Title ask them that up Yes. Yeah. At what point do you know if they want to do the virtual closing? I know if they want to do the virtual closing right away. So that's my first thing when I'm scheduling a closing. So right. when I schedule a closing, it's typically if I have the time, six weeks, if not four weeks. And if obviously it's closer, then I schedule it immediately. But I try to do six to four weeks out is when I get a schedule on the books, what time you're coming in. Um, I ask them where they're located. And if they say, you know, I'm two hours north of the cities, yeah. all right, have, are, how are you with technology? Would you want to consider an online closing, especially if they're a seller? Yeah. Because that's 99% of its time and option. And they absolutely love it. Like they don't want to drive down to the cities to sign documents. They don't want to ship it up and find their own notary. But that's hard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's when I'm asking for purchasers. Uh, it's all like the lender will let them know at that point. So I bring it up um, if they are with guaranteed rate or UWM. I'll bring it up and ask them, especially because I have a client in New York that's purchasing over here and they're, we're curious about it, but unfortunately their lender doesn't allow it. So they're gonna have to make a flight out or a power of attorney. But um, yeah, so six to four weeks out is when I'm typically trying to figure out if they wanna do it. And, and we'll it, communicate with both, like if mm -hmm. they're eligible, we'll just say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk to your clients as far as whatever. So, so that's yeah and it's always a good thing like i've seen agents um bring it up especially if they're working with someone that's far away um and especially if it's a cash deal then it's mm -hmm. pretty much just green light in minnesota you're good right and so it's something that i've seen them bring up right away or even to promote themselves is like hey if you want the option to do an online closing that's something we can do in any county in minnesota what's that for every county in Minnesota. Other than Beltrami yeah. is the only one that I can't get to go through. <laughs> There's one. It's just yeah. Beltrami. I don't know why, but they're way up there. You, you know that too? Yep. Beltrami is the only one. Um, but every other one's accepting it. Yeah. I do and a then, lot of And after the closing is done, does it automatically get recorded at the county from that virtual? Nope. So once it's did? done, our recording department has to review it. There's still the quality control that title companies do to make sure it's legit. Um, the, so the recording uh, department looks at it and then sends it in with notarized.com gives you an access pin and an ID. Uh, so the county can actually go in and look at the recording and, as well and everything to make sure it's a valid, uh, uh, you should Just share me, uh, that it's a valid <laughs> document and that IDs were checked and everything was done legally. So uh, it's a pretty thorough process. And I know when I started, I was kind of got a headache as a closer because I'm like, you know, big brothers watching me the whole time. There's so many different checks and balances. But now that I've been doing it for a couple of years, I'm like, this is a far more thorough way to close as far as like keeping everything um, like legal yeah. and liable. Yeah. Stephen, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. Yeah, this I love the questions. Good. So you were saying, like, 
might have been something we talked about at the beginning. So the, the company or the notary company that you're using is notarize.com. Mm -hmm. It's not like doctor sign or nope. event sign. Yep. Okay, so it's a completely different signing online thing. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and yeah, so something unique that they do too is they only ask for the last four of your social, right? They have a unique algorithm, I would say, uh, in using your name, date of birth, and last four of your social in order to pull the ID questions. Um, so they're not storing full social security numbers on their system either. So if it ever got hacked, there's no need to worry that like your full social is being taken. It's just bits and pieces of your information they put together in order to find this information for the quiz. But there's not much private information that's being held on there other than a picture of your ID and your first and last name. Yep. Yeah. What other this side of the room? <laughs> yeah, I know it's a new thing and there's been a lot of fear around it, but it's been pretty successful so far. Yeah. It's amazing how fast do you want to do your spiel? Yeah. And the notion of two people being in the room physically is gone. Be there at nine o'clock to do the close. It's, nope. <laughs> and it's already gone. And this yeah. system. <laughs> and a year from now, it'll be everything will be, you know. Well, in this system here, uh, allows me to set a window so they can sign. I can say, you know, you can sign anytime today or tomorrow between eight and five. The system texts me when yeah. they're in or when they're logging in. So once it texts me, I can just jump on my computer log in and at that point i've got about five to ten minutes because they're going to pre-sign and do their id validation so i got to probably about a good five minutes uh so i can log in sit here and wait for another minute and they pop in and we go so you can even give them a lar large window to sign as well but you wouldn't really want to do it that way because you might have another phone next to it right yep so i will typically if it's something like that like the other day i had someone who um, he was a doctor, so he was doing doctor stuff until I don't know what he's doing. He's not allowed to tell me <laughs> until two o'clock. Um, and then he had to get home, get washed up, and him and his wife were going to do a signing. I said, you know what? The rest of the day I'm free. Th I'll send your closing out at, uh, let's say, three to nine o'clock. Whenever you guys want to jump on, totally fine because they had kids too. They popped in at 6 30. I just jumped in and we did the closing. Yes. Can you also do this with the that I am unsure. One, one sec here. Yes. Oh, you do? Yeah, well, let's, do, do, let's figure yeah. it out. Should we? Let's have so let's Brian. Do I'll, Brian I'll do will do his. Question by going through my presentation real quick, and then we can open up the questions again. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Actually, we don't have a lot of those. Oh, do you want to? Well, here, maybe I'll put the camera on. Yeah, yeah that's fine. You can there. Hold on one sec. And then we can... You want to allow me to share real quick? I have a slide. Oh, yeah. I have a slideshow. Thank you. How do I do that? Uh, multiple participants. Can got it. Don't oh, you worry. You got it. Don't oh, look you, at you. Don't okay. you worry. All nice right. Work. Yeah. So uh, again, my name is Brian Wernemann. I'm with Guaranteed Rate. I've been doing mortgages for 22 years. I've been with Guaranteed Rate for eight years, and I've been. Uh, we have a hybrid version of this, which is called flash closing. So we've been doing it ever since eight years ago and beyond, but as far as the actual e note, as far as since 2019. So we can kind of go on from there. So um, you can slip through here, Claire. So basically there's a hybrid and there's e-close. The e-close is 100% online. So they sign 100% as far as we'll put e notarized, as far as we'll put the closer, um, or our hybrid version of it. Um, so 35 states as far as with the e-notarized, all 50 states as far as where they can do our flash closing. Flash closing is basically you can go on the next Screen. So our hybrid basically means is that that borrower will actually get all the documents usually two days before they're closing. They'll be able to view every document they can. They just can't sign it. They will actually pre-actually have a set closing time with a closer at a title company. So they'll sign all their documents on the morning before they go through the closing table. And anything that needs to be notarized will be notarized at the title company. So there's usually like 10 documents, whatever, usually. So, uh, so this way, they, they still get the experience. If they're first time home buyers, they still want to kind of go to the closing. They still want to kind of get the keys. They want to kind of go do all that kind of thing. They still can go online and do all their signings before they go there. And then literally at about 15 minutes, as far as at the title company, they're in and out and done. So, and then the e close again is available in 35 states. So these are the states that are not currently 
So Wisconsin is allowable. You can do it with yeah, Wisconsin stuff. So. Yeah, so these are the states. So, but again, uh, just because the states are uh, approved for, 35 states are, doesn't mean necessarily the county. So it has to do with when you purchase the premium and put it in, uh, we will actually know, uh, we'll actually go as far as if it sells for an aisle before the closing. Do I not see Florida? Florida loves Florida. it. Florida loves it. Oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. These yeah. are the ones that don't. Yeah, these are the ones that are not. They Sorry. don't. Florida yeah. 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 I Florida mean, Florida's yeah. probably as far as the state. The first one on board telling with it, right? Yeah. 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 Which can, which yeah. is very convenient because you know there's so many people now yeah. buying down in Florida that are probably climbing. And of course, you really know as far as on both I read and as far as for the actual uh, you know the clothing. They, even if they're closing, as far as a husband and wife, they don't even have to be in the same area. They can actually, one could be out of state, one could be traveling, it can be, it can be all be done. Now, if they decide to do the hybrid where they actually have to have the notarize, they have to physically go to the title company. So at that point, they're going to be on vacation or they're actually be uh, you know, on a business trip. They're going to want to use the, the full e-post because they can sign it from New York and still have to be available. So they just the time as long as it's done that day. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why, again, obviously they can sign anywhere, they can sign it as far as um, we are, um, we have been trying and trying and we finally just got approved. We are the only lender uh, that will actually do VA loans. So people that are de deployed can actually do it now. So before they got deployed in an emergency, sometimes the closings had to be held up. Like as far as they just couldn't sign it, couldn't get a power attorney or whatever. Uh, now they're just like wherever they're at, they can sign as long as they sign within that 24 hour period. They can sign the document. So can you close commercial property too. We don't do commercial property. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then they kind of went through the same things. They get the invitation in the mail. Uh, they verify the identity of the person, connect the test. Uh, they do the notarize, and then they're done. I mean, really, it's that simple. As far mm -hmm. as and Chad went over everything, as far as the whole steps, as far as the whole process. So, and then why? Uh, obviously. Power attorneys. I heard somebody say about power attorney. Uh, it's an easy way to get around a power attorney. You don't need one. You don't have to worry about it. Um, especially if we're in certain states where there's actually attorneys that are involved with it. Uh, the attorneys are like they were kind of the ones that were kind of skittish at first. They're like, can you really do this? And they can. So they don't have to worry about it even in, a, in an attorney state. So I, you know, if they say savvy borrowers. You don't have to be that savvy. Really, you don't. You just have to. Have a, you don't. You have to have an internet connection to know how to click, and you actually be able to have someone go through the documents with you. It's really not that mm -hmm. difficult, and it's kind of foolproof actually because that make you go through it. So, but that's really it. I mean, it's really an, an end result of it. So for the mortgage part of it, um, again, we will know once we actually get the purchase agreement. We run their file through the system. We actually automatically know if they're eligible for if they're full e close if they're just a hybrid part of it. Um, and 100% of ours will do the hybrid. So, I mean, as far as the part of it, it's just the equals version of some, not everyone as far as will actually fall into that category. So. Any other questions? And now we can open it up because that kind of hopefully clarified a little bit about as far as from some of the people on your side. Besides the county, what would make somebody ineligible? So it's both mainly the county and it's mainly as far as the loan type that they got, the loan program that they're actually doing. So some investors, so with some, so let's just say that uh, we have 35 investors and they chose a investor, one investor that has a better rate, that investor may not actually choose or allow e -plus. So the investor itself. Did you say that there, there's a fee for people to do this? Like how many there's no fee. No, we don't charge any extra fee for it. Yeah, if I can say something about that, yeah. it actually saves the title company money and saves the lender money yeah. as well. Um, as a closer for a purchase, it would even with the flash close, I gotta say something yeah. about it, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, even <laughs> but like with a flash close or with an e-close on a purchase, you know, you're usually talking documents for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. It's a lot of documents. Uh, with a flash close, people are usually in and out in about 10 to 15 minutes because all they have left to sign is the mortgage note. And maybe two affidavits and then they leave um and with an online closing full online closing it's about 20 minutes so it's saving the company's money so it's like why would they have to charge you money for it too and no driving yeah yeah and the flash close is actually really nice that's our kind of hybrid um 
it, it's nice because as far as they can have the documents two days, they can read all the documents. So if they have any questions on them, they can actually call me and go over the documents then. So they know when the data becomes active and they get signed and they'll get a notification say it's opened up at 12.01 a.m. as far as that morning, they can log in and they have to sign it. We get notified when they sign it and title company gets notified when they sign it. So they know when they're majority of the portion of the law is signed. So. Very convenient for time, yeah. for yeah. people's time. Yeah. 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 Was there another question back there? No. <laughs> and with your, if you do a completely online closing, you can be put in as a contact on the closing as well, where it'll text you and email you when the clients are done as an agent. It oh, yes. gives you a little bit of peace yeah. of mind. Like as an agent, you will know when they are, are finished and the closing's done. And, yeah. and you can get any notification. Yeah. You, you get one notification from us as well saying the loan has actually all funded, the loan's done. Mm -hmm. now, so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if an agent wanted to be present at the virtual closing, mm -hmm. can you have one? So they would have to be present with the notary or with the client in person. That's the only hold up. Uh, the reason for that is obviously it's a very secure system yeah. and they don't want extra people in there. Um, the big thing is signing at will. That's a really big thing in the script for saying it as well. So they prefer you're in a room alone. But if your agent wants to be there, they will have to be with the clients. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or with the closers. Yeah. Depends on much clients like it, you know. Any other any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, it's a slick option for. Like, yeah. Me and my right now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of times it was convenient because somebody ended up getting sick out of state and was quarantined. And yeah, I had clients in Australia, them. Israel, right, Austria like that couldn't get out of the country. They weren't letting anyone leave. Yeah. So, and they were like, well, we're gonna be here for a year. <laughs> we might as well sign some documents, yeah. get rid of our house. And then we just wired them the money and they were fine, yeah. so. Well, I'm great for the service people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. The idea is, I mean, it's, it's just a great option because like I said, the pandemic, uh, it really proved to a lot of the companies that here we are lacking in technology and this is the way now it's actually you need to kind of get up to what speed with things like that happening. So, mm -hmm. you know, and more and more and more people are just choosing not to go to the closing table and actually be there all day. You know, it used to be an event where it kind of took the whole day off, go move, things like that. Oh, like we're too busy, we can't when we're working from home, it's just not practical to do that. So mm -hmm. close on, be done with it, move on with your day in 10, 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. it's all weird now, but it's true probably for a little while. Yeah. yeah. I like to say real estate is 10 years behind in technology yeah. at all times. <laughs> it's, a, it's a normal world for us. I don't, I don't think I've ever, other than the hybrid or the ECOs, I haven't done anything in the last probably five years as far as uh, traditional closing, as far as the docs. Yeah, you guys were ahead design, of the game. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, you. If, if you have an FAQ page someplace, um, so I can try to remember the difference between hybrid and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so right. if you want, we'll back up as far as my contact information. Is this me? That's that's. Uh, oh, oh that I'll share the screen real quick. Don't you worry. Back his, or if uh, anyone, if you guys can actually share, you can just actually send it out. I can send it out to them as far as. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, yep. Um, but if you want, just shoot me an email or text, um, and I'll actually get that information to you. I can actually send this whole slide presentation to people. So. Right. Yeah, because then you'll. And as far as title companies go all you have to remember is it's just a closing over a webcam <laughs> that's literally the that's literally the difference closing over a webcam right. sellers can always do it buyers just check they, the lender they first. just have to have a, a video camera and audio so whatever yep. device they want to use for us. A little more complicated for you guys. yeah i'm not sure why more lenders aren't getting on board with it i really don't i, I mean especially last year uh so our company grew uh, we were at 5,500 people, and we now over the pandemic grew to 8,800 people because people, lenders weren't actually, their lender wasn't actually doing that. And they're like, we need to go somewhere where we can actually get this done and get it closed. So, yeah. That's um, so why I closed my house. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Anything else? Any, Any questions online? I think people probably fizzled out. And you guys will get you uh, my contact info too. So, if you guys have questions on online closing, just in general, it doesn't have to be a title or anything. You can just ask me questions and I'll answer. I'm pretty responsive. 
And our closer, Melanie, is in our office downstairs in our Minnesota title office. And so she's going to be able to be doing the run. She'll be up and running next so, week. Yeah. And kudos to Melanie for doing something sort of like this last month with my clients that got COVID. Ooh. And she had to do. Was that us? Sorry, no, that was oh. another one. That was another COVID. <laughs> Those are other COVID clients, yeah. I see. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Probably can stop recording. Yes, I will stop recording now. <laughs> yeah. So next week, Melanie should be. She just got her e notary approved from the state. Okay. And so she'll be trained in and ready to do her own files 